Hey guys, today I'm talking about growing blackberries in containers. This particular fabric pot is a great choice to grow blackberries in. It's about to be upsized to a 25 gallon pot to help its growth and it will be quite a bit more productive by doing that. I'm going to show you every tip and trick I know along the way to help produce the maximum amount of blackberries for your garden. So follow along. It's a perfect way to do it in containers. Let's get inside the greenhouse and I'll show you exactly how to go about each step of the way. Hey guys, today's episode is about growing blackberries in containers and how to maximize their yield and the quality of the blackberry themselves. I'm going to go through every possible tip you can do to increase the quality of your blackberry. So keep watching and I'm going to show you exactly what to do and what are the best practices and what are the things that will cause failure in your blackberries. So the first thing you're going to want to investigate is which blackberry varieties are best suited for your zone climate. Now I'm going to put a list in the description of blackberries and what zones they the best blackberries for that zone. So take a look in the description and you'll be able to see that. But this one is Navajo and it is a thornless blackberry. And boy, that makes a huge difference to me because I hate thorns in my blackberries. When I was a kid growing up, we went out to the forest and picked blackberries. And if you didn't have a good pair of gloves, and even if you did, if your arms weren't completely covered, you would be eat up with the blackberry thorn. So I like the thornless variety. For me, that's just the way I prefer to grow blackberries. The thorn blackberries have their advantages as well. But I will say if you had if I had to pick absolutely thornless is the way to go. So this particular blackberry bush is really starting to outgrow its container. This container is a smaller size grow pot and I think I'm going to go up to like a 10 gallon bucket size. So that's one thing you need to take into consideration is your container size. If you're not planning to change it out very soon, these will outgrow a container quickly. So just remember you may want to start with a, something about the size of a five gallon bucket or a five gallon bucket itself is great as long as you make sure you drill your drainage holes quite a bit in the bottom because blackberries like well draining soil. Now terracotta and wood are both good choices because of their temperature regulating ability but terracotta can sometimes in my zone freeze and crack and so there's a limited life on those and those are not cheap. Wood is also great, but then you have the issue of wood rot, and that can take place over a short amount of time because most of the woods you're going to want to grow this in are not going to be treated. So I kind of go back to the grow bag, and I think that's a great thing to do is to start in grow bags, and then if you need something larger, then go to a five-gallon bucket. So what I do is I use a 30-30-30 mix, 30% homemade potting soil, premium potting soil that I'll link a video up to above, 30% compost and 30% peat, and then 10%, we're gonna to top that off with our special ingredient. Now our special ingredient, that the 10% that I'm talking about is perlite. We want to maximize drainage, but the secret ingredient is worm castings, and that is one of the most important things you can do is in incorporate that into the one or two inch top layer of soil. Those, th those worm castings will do wonders for your plant because it releases it allows microbiological activity in the soil. So that's one thing that a lot of people overlook is worm castings. And before you ask, this is my earthquake table. It was not made in Southern California, but unfortunately I haven't got around to creating a better table. So sorry, I know the plant's gonna look funny vibrating through the whole video, but it's not a lot to be done about it. Now, if you opt to not use a grow, cloth grow bag, and a lot of people do, I mean, grow bags is kind of something new. It took me a long time to warm up to them. But if you decide to go with, let's say, a five gallon bucket or a plastic container, you want to add a one to two inch layer of maybe pea gravel, broken pottery, something at the bottom that can encourage maximum drainage, but also at the same time prevent soil washout because soil can escape even through some quarter inch holes at the bottom. So over time, you'll have this big air gap down at the bottom of your bucket and may not even realize it. So I always recommend something like, I think pea gravel is the best way to go because it allows the water to drain out properly, but then it, there's a good barrier between the holes in your container and the soil. Now, pre-watering or pre-moistening your soil is really important because peat can be very resistant to absorbing water in, initially. So I would recommend putting that into a container and lightly spraying it with a hose and then mixing it by hand before you add your blackberry to the container. So you'll make sure that your soil is pre-moistened and you don't have an issue of dry spots in the soil. Sometimes you may have the water just run off the top if you haven't done that part. Now, as far as the hole size you're gonna to wanna to put, you're gonna want about at least two to three inches around if you're purchasing it pre, if it's not bare root, 
you're going to want two to three inches around your container. So let's say you have a six to eight inch wide ga average gallon size container pot. You just want the grow bag to be quite a bit larger around the perimeter and depth so you can add extra soil. So just make sure there's about a two inch gap to add soil to to make sure that your the roots of your blackberry have some place to go. Now the top, if you are coming in not bare root, but you're using a potted blackberry, you want the top of that to be level with the soil and you want to kind of firm down the top of the soil as well. Now about where to place your blackberry, you're going to want a minimum of six hours of sunlight a day for maximum berry production. If it's in, the, in a semi-shaded area, you're going to see a lot less success with your blackberry. So just remember six hours or more and you can buy devices that will, you can leave out in the garden and over a period of an entire day, you can get an idea of how many hours of daylight that particular spot gets. But you also have to remember as the seasons change and the sun moves further in the northern to the northern sky, that's going to change very quickly. So an area in my garden that's very sunny in the middle of summer, as the fall approaches, that area becomes a lot more shaded. So just remember, you want to take that into account to maximize your berry yield throughout the year. Now, planting next to a fence or a building may be a good idea for blackberries because if you have a lot of strong winter winds, that can dehydrate the bush. And so that's one thing you want to consider is where it's not in an open area, but you want it to be protected from those drying winds. Now, if it's possible, if you can find time about every three to four weeks, you want to rotate your pot to have even growth. That way, one plant, one side of the plant is not the only side that's getting sunlight. So this adds a little bit of extra work. But rotating your pot and allowing sun to hit both sides of your blackberry is a really important thing to do to have even growth and also even fruit distribution. Now blackberries like the soil evenly moist but not waterlogged. So just remember using a pH meter that also allows you to do water, find out how much soil is in your water and how dry or how moist it is is really important. I really like pH meters that has multi-functions because it saves you a lot of time in the garden and you can know pH, soil moisture, you can, this one particular one has a light sensor on top. So just remember, keeping a close eye on your soil moisture is really important. Now, if you don't have one and you just want to do the finger test, your soil, the top one to two inches should be consistently moist, but not waterlogged. Now, when you do water, you want to water deeply, but less frequently, and that will allow the roots to become stronger because they'll send out more roots looking for moisture. So sometimes watering every day or every few days can be a little bit too much. So you want those roots to really become more vigorous by less frequent watering. Also a saucer will help, but this saucer I just have sitting here just to keep the table from getting wet, but maybe a more shallow saucer because you have to remember there's a wicking action that's gonna take place. So unless it's the dead of summertime, you may not want it sitting in a deep saucer like this, maybe more shallow. But if it is the middle of summer and you can remember to take it out of there as the summer starts to come to an end, that's fine, but just remember, too much water is gonna cause a problem with the roots very quickly. So when you first plant your blackberry, you're gonna to wanna to incorporate some slow release fertilizer to begin with, and a good 10-10-10 or balanced fertilizer is gonna be your best bet. So just remember as you're mixing your soil, just add a scoop or two of this, a handful, and that's gonna help over a longer period of time, a slow release. Now the liquid fertilizer I consistently recommend is Bloom Booster because it has such a high phosphorus amount. This product has taken the place of miracle Grow for me because of that one thing. It does have nitrogen, it does have potassium, potassium, but the phosphorus is what makes a huge difference, especially in something like this that needs flowers to produce its fruit. So the 54 and the phosphorus level in this container will make a huge difference over time, and you'll have a much healthier and more productive plant. So it's one of the secrets to growing a lot of berries is to have a high phosphorus fertilizer. Also, you need to remember that if you have too much nitrogen, you're going to have a lot of leafy growth, but not near as much production of berries. Now, I think this is a great setup right here using a five gallon bucket with a tomato cage in it. And you can line these along a fence and just keep them pruned. Each blackberry bush, you can keep it pruned within a confined area so that you can move it if you need to. But this is a really great setup if you don't want to do the grow bags. And you can upsize your grow bag and do a tomato cage in those as well. So Either way, whether you're wanting a five gallon bucket, and some of the, the uh, grow bags I have are quite a bit larger than this, maybe 25 gallons. So either way, it's a great way to do it because you're not confined to one area. You can move them around if you have to, and they're just a lot easier to manage, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now, as you're 
blueberry grows around your tomato cage, it's a good idea to use either bread ties or tomato clips just to clip it to the structure so that way the canes don't fall over. But this is a perfect setup, either plastic or the grow bag, whichever you prefer. But they're going to need support. Most of them will need some kind of trellising. And that's what I recommend is using a tomato cage so you can move the entire system to another location if needed, whether it's because of sunlight or just you want it closer to where you can consume it and grab your produce and run inside and you don't have to go a long way. So you can move it around in the garden a lot easier this way. Once it's planted in the ground, you're kind of stuck and you're anchored to that one location. So as far as pruning, you want to prune your older canes and also prune the tips to allow more lateral growth. You want an open air to, to have better air circulation and sunlight penetration into the bush. So even this one probably needs to be have a little bit of thinning done on it. But that's one thing as your blackberries get older, you want to make sure you allow maximum sunlight and airflow. Now, I recently just made a video about aphids and spider mites, and I'll link that up above. But that's one thing that can attack your blackberry bush. So you want to make sure you do consistent monitoring of that and always check the undersides because sometimes there will be aphids like you wouldn't believe. You can't see them on top of the leaf, but you'll flip the leaf over and discover you have a huge aphid problem. So that's one thing to remember is to make sure you monitor and use that formula I've got. It works great and it's perfectly organic and safe for consuming even right up to the day of harvest. Now getting about natural ways to control aphids in your garden, I don't recommend using ladybugs because a lot of those are harvested from the wild and they might bring diseases to your native ladybug population. So I would stick with the organic natural methods rather than ladybugs because it's really a lot of people buy ladybugs and they bring it to the garden and they might fly away because a lot of people don't realize aphids are sometimes working in kind of a symbiotic relationship with ants and the ants are actually protecting the aphids because the aphid the aphids secrete a sugary like substance and the ants want that so they're kind of guarding the aphids if you will so that's one thing to remember is that you might bring a lot of ladybugs to your garden and then the next day they're all gone you don't know why it's because the ants battle with the ladybugs to keep them off of the aphids. Now to prevent any fungal issues with your blackberry, make sure that you kind of open it up to allow for good airflow. That's another thing that can cause that issue. And I'll link a really good organic natural fungicide down below. But just remember, you want to make sure you have maximum sunlight and airflow to keep your blackberries as healthy as possible. If you notice any of your branches or canes starting to have diseases or dying, make sure you cut those away quickly before it spreads to the rest of the plant. So it's just kind of an ongoing process. A lot of people don't take really good care of their blackberries. So it's a good idea to make sure that as it grows, you're just kind of consistently watching it and monitoring it because once something like that happens and it spreads to the rest of the plant, you could possibly lose the entire shrub or it's just one of those things. It's a good idea to do that. Now, as far as mulching goes, I like to use a very finely shredded pine bark. And at uh, the big box store here, Lowe's, it's called soil conditioner. But a lot of people opt to use things like pine straw or just a regular straw. But whenever you put it around the plant, you want to make sure that you leave about a one inch barrier to prevent any type of rot issues on the base of the cane. So just remember, that's going to help suppress weeds and it's also going to help retain moisture. But as far as when you put it down, just leave that little area open. I'm sorry to repeat myself a second time, but that's really important because you don't want a rot issue at the base of your blackberry plant. Now, even in the winter time, you want to make sure your soil doesn't dry out. And that's where, again, the monitors come in, your pH soil, uh, water monitor, light monitor. These little devices can save you a lot of trouble in the garden, and it takes the guesswork out of knowing what's happening. So just remember, even in the winter time, there can be a certain amount of drying. If you go weeks without any kind of significant uh, rainfall, snowfall, whatever. So even though you think it's dormant, it still needs that little bit of moisture. Now, I'm sorry, we have a hawk outside who seems to be attacking a, some type of rodent. So I know it's probably showing up on the microphone. So sorry about that. But anyways, also, if you have extremely heavy frost and you do have it in a container where it could be moved and protected, if you can bring it inside of a basement, greenhouse, garage, that's going to help as well. But if you can't, pile a lot of more straw even around the outside of the bag to help prevent any type of re root freezing. Now I've yet to mention this right here, but this is a great additive to your soil. If you don't have a regular watering schedule or an irrigation system, adding some of these watering crystals can really make a difference because it can last, keep your moisture in your soil quite a bit longer. So these can 
retain or absorb up to 500% of their weight. It just looks like rock salt, but they really, uh, you'll see them a lot of times. This used to be an additive in premium, premium potting mix, but I believe they stopped putting it in there, I guess, because of the expense involved. But I would always recommend putting a little bit of the soil moist crystals into your soil if you don't have a good watering schedule or irrigation system. That's going to save you a lot of issues and you'll keep your plant very healthy along the way. Now you want to direct any new canes coming out away from older canes and allow those to uh, have their own space. Again, that goes back to sunlight penetration and airflow. Also, as far as the number of canes per container, you want to limit that as well to probably maybe three or four because as it becomes more and more crowded in a container, you're going to have less productive blackberries. So just remember to limit to about three, I'd say is the ideal number. During your dormant season, you're also going to want to renew, re remove any weak or dead cane. You'll be able to tell that by the color of the canes. A gray, grayish canes are going to be the ones you want to remove. Those are older and maybe not be producing anymore, and they could be outright dead. Now, blackberries prefer their soil a little bit on the acidic side from 5.5 up to about 7. So if you want to lower that pH, you can add some peat moss to the soil, and that's the recommended dosage I at the, earlier in the video, I told you exactly the way I do it, and that's going to keep your pH lower. And that's what I think is going to help produce blackberries over the seasons by having a lot of peat, peat moss added to your soil. A lot of the so bag soils you're going to buy are not going to have very much peat moss at all. So that's one of the things that's going to really help your blackberries. Now, if you've tested your pH and it's not where it needs to be, you can use sulfur to lower it or lime to raise your pH. So that's two things you can add to the soil. And if you have added those, just give it about a few days before you retest. And then that way you'll know whether or not you've added too much or too little. Also, whenever you're testing pH with a pH monitor, you want to make, this, make sure the soil is slightly moist. Dry soil is not going to give you an accurate reading. Now, one thing I have yet to make a video about, and it's on my list of videos to do, is installing a bee hotel, and that's kind of an unusual item. But if you can install something like that, I'm trying to remember the name brand of it, but it escapes me, but I'll put it down below. But anyways, the something like that can attract a lot of pollinators to the flower. So if you have it close by, mounted somewhere where they can go in and out of their home and then go directly to your blackberry bush, that's a great thing because it will just have this little symbiotic relationship between your plant and your bees and they'll keep coming back and forth and your pollinators will be doing a great job and saving you a lot of time and effort. If you do all that and you don't give any blackberries, you've kind of wasted your time. So here in zone 7A, the hot summer sun can be brutal even on blackberries and some of these blackberries may not be the best or native to my area. So you might want to consider shade cloth to help cut down in the summer, the hottest summer months, months, July and August here specifically, and that might save your plant a lot of issues. You can buy shade cloth very cheaply and it will filter the sun from being 100% down to 50%, whatever you, whatever you want. I have on the greenhouse right now 90% shade cloth for the summertime because it gets so hot in the greenhouse. Now, one thing a lot of people don't talk about as far as rejuvenating the plant and reviving it. And this is done quite a bit in the bonsai world is root pruning. We take our bonsai out of their pot and do a little bit of root pruning, like half an inch to an inch. And sometimes we'll take a root hook and pull out some of the roots. And so pruning the roots down below can be just as important as pruning above to encourage growth. So that's just one thing you might want to consider doing if you don't want to go to a larger pot size, but aerating those roots and pulling them out and doing just a little bit of pruning can really help a lot of different types of plants, especially things you have potted in containers. Now, one of the things in the South you really have to contend with is birds eating the berries and fruits that you're growing, especially things like peaches and stuff like that. They're always gonna be attacking for their own food source. So remember, you might wanna consider bird netting if you have that problem where you live as well. So if you've never used one of these, I have purchased this about five years ago and it's I think it's maybe the second one I've had but anyways this is a hori hori knife and it's a Japanese thing and so you can use this to stab into the soil three or four inches deep or maybe even slightly deeper to help aerate the soil to allow better penetration of nutrients water and things like that and it actually helps to do that so aerating a lawn as well as aerating shrubs like this is really one of those things you ought to consider doing and put it on your list of to-dos throughout the year. You can do that almost any time of the year as long as it's not extremely, extremely cold. If the soil is frozen, just leave it alone and wait till it's a little bit warmer outside.
Now some varieties of blackberries can have biennial canes and you might have growth one year without any berries and the next year you may have growth. So that's kind of a toss up depending on the variety you have. So just remember if it didn't produce blackberries for you this year, it probably most likely will, will next year as long as the plant is healthy. So some varieties of blackberries will sometimes send out runners from the plant and it's a good idea to cut those off if they're rooted and then plant them in another container. It's an easy way to propagate blackberries. So if you see that, you want to remove them because that can pull energy from the main plant and also hinder fruit production. Now each year you're going to want to take off about an inch to two inches of soil from the top of your plant and put in some fresh soil. You're just going to want to replenish that soil at the top and that will be a very important thing to do, but also make sure you add some of the worm castings to that mix that will also help the microbiological component to the soil and that will keep your blackberry very happy and very healthy. So if you want to go up to a larger container size and you're going to use plastic, um, you're going to want to use something like this to clean it very carefully on the inside. Now in a grow bag, you'll need to use a antibacterial dish soap once you've removed the plant and just kind of rinse it around and make sure you wash it out well because there can be diseases in the grow bag container and also plastic containers. In plastic, I usually recommend the generic form of Listerine. You can spray it down on the inside and wipe it down. So that's really important to make sure that the new container it's going into does not have some type of disease in there because it can really kill the plant very quickly if there's a disease present in your container. So in springtime, you want to wa want to watch for your bud breaks because that is a sign that your growing season is starting. And that's why you want to use some of your bloom booster at that point. It's going to help that process get started and really encourage the plant to put on berries and flowers. Now, if you notice some of your leaves look diseased, discolored, or have issues with them, there could be something wrong. So you want to remove those leaves as quickly as possible and can carefully monitor your plant because those kind of things can take over an entire plant quickly before you even have a chance to correct the issue. So just take some cutters, pruners, and just remove those leaves and keep a close eye on your plant as it grows throughout the growing season. So companion planting is a great way to prevent insects from getting to your blackberries. Like Something like marigolds or chives can be planted around it, even in the same container, and that will help deter some of the pests. So just remember, that really helps when you're wanting to keep pests off your plant and you don't have to monitor it near as much when you have a natural other plant, another plant there that's going to help repel those and an easy way to do it is by planting those. So sometimes when your canes get really long like this one, they'll actually come back down to the ground and touch the ground. And if there's just the right conditions, they will start rooting right there where the cane is touching the ground. So if that happens, cut it before it gets down to the ground area and then remove it with its roots and you can start a whole nother blackberry bush just by doing that propagation method. So it's kind of a way that it just happens naturally in nature. And so that's a great thing to do. And you can actually encourage that by setting it on the ground, putting something on top of the cane to put pressure up against the soil where it's grown down to. And in that way, it'll just send out its roots and you'll end up with multiple plants very quickly. So if you live in an area that has high winds, you're going to want to consider staking next to your container because that'll prevent your entire shrub from being blown over. And you can use something like bamboo or traditional stakes and just tie it carefully to that and that will prevent that from happening. So just remember that once it falls over, it could damage the root system. So doing that little ounce of prevention makes a huge difference in the long run. Now getting back to our extreme heat here in the summertime in 7A, if that occurs and you see some heat stress and you see a lot of wilting leaves, you may want to move the plant to the shaded area if you're consistently watering because it could be too much for that particular variety you have. So getting back to the shade fabric, if you don't do that, just move the plant to a shaded area and that can also help with the heat stress. So once blackberries have established themselves in your containers, they can become a perennial producing plant each year and that can go on for many years. So just remember, you want to really take care of it because you're dealing with something that's going to provide you with berries and fruit each year for many years to come. And if you take care of it properly, it can be quite a bit of fruit over what would normally take place if it's not well taken care of. So guys, I am a blackberry fanatic. I love blackberries. Whenever I have a chance to buy them at the grocery store when they're in season or when they're brought in from possibly other places, I always buy them. And if you've never had a blackberry cobbler, that's an incredible dessert. It's way too sweet and way too much sugar. And I try not to eat it on rare occasions, but if I see it on the menu at a restaurant, I'm probably going to get it. 
I just want to say thanks so much for watching. I hope these tips will help you grow blackberry. It's really a rewarding plant. It's easy to grow if you follow these rules and steps along the way, and you'll find that you have quite an abundant amount of blackberries each year. Have a great day, guys.